Hey, what's up, guys? It's Joel Benavides with the Squawk Out Podcast. It is the 23rd of October, 2020, and it's 9.09 p.m. somewhere deep in uh, South Texas, and I'm joined by um, April. Uh, that's how she's chosen to uh, refer to herself, and that's what we're going to uh, honor. Uh, April is an educator. Uh, in South Texas, and she is also a paranormal experiencer. And so we have a lot of interesting stuff. Um, this is my first Halloween special. And so April has been good enough to grace us with some of the very weird stories that um, she's uh, that she's experienced through the years. And so um, we'll get to all that momentarily. Uh, April, how are you doing today? Are you are you there? doing good joel good good um so we spoke over uh the last couple of days uh in preparation for this and uh i was i'm really excited to have you on because uh, a lot of the times as a podcaster it can be uh difficult some some guests can be difficult but you know right away when you find somebody who's gonna uh uh, just uh, the flow is going to be easier. And, and in the in the calls that we had the last couple of days, um, I, I felt that it was going to be really easy to bring you on. And I'm really interested to get the paranormal stuff too. But before we go there, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, what you do for a living, um, and uh, and maybe talk about your family and and uh, and where you grew up and stuff like that. So, um, again, my name's April. I'm a mom. I'm a teacher. I'm a wife. Um, I have lots of hobbies. I'm, I'm a hobbyist. I have lots of little cool things I'm interested in. Um, like right now, I'm really into cricketing. Um, and just really busy with work. I'm a little bit of a workaholic. Um, I grew up in Central Texas. And... And right now, I'm just really excited to share what I my experiences with you. <laughs> it, it, um, you mentioned that you had some uh, some family history that was special. What was that about? So, I I'll start with like my mom. I remember she said she was a little girl, and she lived with her grandma, and they lived along this creek. Mm -hmm. And well, this was she, this le led into the paranormal stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and so when it's, she's, it's like in the early 1960s, I'm guessing. And so pretty much everyone in her small town knows everybody, um, especially like the Latino population. It wasn't, it wasn't super big. And so, you know, we'll talk about this more later, but she yeah. had, she had a situation happen in her kitchen one, one evening. Mm -hmm. so, and we can talk about that later. Um, yeah, well, I think, I, I think, uh, I asked, uh, whether it was related to the paranormal stuff, cause we were going to go into that, I think, uh, in a few minutes. So, um, uh, with respect to your job as a teacher and then also as a parent, uh, tell me, uh, tell me about, about, uh, your offspring and, uh, and how she came into being and, uh, and, and, and what that's like being a parent and a teacher. Do you cross, uh, things over from, you know, like, do you teach the way you parent and parent the way you teach? Um, that's a really good question. 
Um, I would say that a lot of my kids call me mom at school. So I'm thinking, Thank yeah, it probably does transition over, especially last year. My babies, they still call me mom, um, even though they're no longer, I'm no longer their teacher. They'll just come down the hall to say hi and say, hi, mom. And I'm like, hey, keep going. You got to go to class. The bell's going to ring. Like, I, I don't know. I guess it just comes off naturally. My mom vibes. <laughs> Do, do, I mean, do they, uh, they just naturally call you mom or is that something this that's year, like passed down from student to student, like year to year? Like, is that a thing? Like, This I don't... year, not so much. This year, no, I guess, because we're so disconnected, mm -hmm. you know, and especially like, you know, this whole situation with COVID. No, not this year. Um, but last year, I mean, they all, the, most of them call me mom. Like the majority of my kids call me mom. And like they were going to take like a state test and it said to write your teacher's name on the front of it. Mm -hmm. um, and they were like, wait a second, like, how do we spell your name? Because they've just been calling me mom the whole, almost oh. the whole day. <laughs> and I was like, spell it this. I was like, I had to write it on the board. And they're like, oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, we need to practice that. <laughs> How is, and we'll, we'll get further into teaching in a minute, but how has COVID like affected, um, all that stuff? Like, I mean, what, what's going on, um, in the state with, with regards to testing this year? I mean, as far as I know, it's still going on. Thankfully, I don't teach a tested subject. Mm -hmm. Um, that doesn't mean that if we have testing, I'm not going to be part of it. Yeah. Um, but as far as I know, it's still on, like we're still hauling forward, we we had done I think it was in the spring it was it was before star there's another test that students have to experience and it was right before right like right when spring break happened like it was crazy like I really d I thought maybe we'd be out a week and that we'd be back like I don't know what I was thinking but when I is star when is star gone. supposed to be taking place oh gosh I don't know like in like April I guess it just depends on like what your grade level is yeah oh okay i, I right. hadn't i hadn't really thought that far ahead but i have it on my <laughs> calendar at work i don't like at this point i'm like living and surviving in the moment i'm like we've got this done let's go on to the next week <laughs> yeah and we're gonna get into the details uh here in a few minutes but man it's gotta be freaking ridiculous for you guys i think everybody i hear stories from educators and then you know i talked to my wife at the end of the day and she's got she's a hairstylist so she does a lot of um a lot of teachers she has a lot of uh a lot of teachers and educators who are our clients and she hears the horror stories and so i really want to get into that it's, it just doesn't sound like a very fun time for you guys no not this year like this year's been really rough like all the way around and you know i was in a way, I'm a little ahead of the curve because um, I actually before way before COVID, I had a student who was homebound. And so they I was already a virtual teacher before virtual teaching was a thing mm -hmm. um, because they couldn't come to school. And so all of their work had to be through Google Classroom. So when when all of COVID happened, I kind of had a grasp of what needed to be done Mm -hmm. for everybody else so it was easier for me in that in that sense because I had already been practicing that way before like since the fall I think the experience from what I can gather the experience between grade levels and probably even between school districts is like the 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 gap of uh maybe experience time intensity it's huge. You might have um, a class in one grade at one school district and it's like very low speed, like minimal work um, for the students, I mean. And then you might have something like your situation where it's like full speed ahead. You know, the, the entire day is needed to utilize what's on the plate, et cetera, et cetera. Is that, does that sound like, a, like an accurate yeah. statement? But I think everyone's exhausted. Like we're all pretty like stretched thin there's it's this is not the spring like this is not the spring at all and I think some students think that like oh well I'm gonna pass no matter what so some people I'm not saying all but some mm. people aren't doing anything because they're just hoping that they'll be granted just immunity like this is going to be the spring where I don't have to do as much work and I'll still pass yeah damn that's yeah 
and 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 it seems like it seems like there's not a lot of uh uh tools available to you guys to kind of enforce that i wish more technology was available like if we had adequate technology for like all mm -hmm. um i think that would really expedite some of the problems because you know some students don't have computers at home like that's just the reality and some districts can't afford the technology. that's inconceivable that's inconceivable like i mean I, I, and so I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say most districts must provide that stuff. My my little one has a laptop from school. I mean, we have computers here, but we also have one from her school because it was available. Not everybody does. And so when you end up in that situation, I just want you to know teachers aren't planning for just virtual. They're planning for virtual for the kids that are in person. And then they're also planning for the kids that are learning like at odd hours, like, cause we are in the weirdest time to be alive. Yeah. And like, they might be doing work conceivably at like 11 at one in the morning, because for whatever reason, they aren't going to zoom in the daytime. Golly. And so, so that would be called asynchronous or, or is that the, yeah, so that's true asynchronous because the ones that are coming to school, in the day, like they're at home in their pajamas, but they're going to Zoom at the same time as the kids that are in person. Mm -hmm. They're doing synchronous learning because, I mean, it's it's a kind of weird synchronous learning, but I mean, they're doing it at the same time as the kids in the room that are virtually present. I and, mean, and are the and, Zoom meetings like recorded and do they have access to it or is that not always the case and they're just doing it like if they were in college and just not showing heard, up to class? I've heard so many different variations from like different teachers were all over the U S and I mean, there is like every combination you can think of some people like I, it's crazy when you get on these boards and the teachers are like, Oh, our district said that's not allowed because it's illegal. Like it's, it's an infringement of privacy. And then someone else like, well, we can't use what you're using because our district says it's an infringement of privacy. And so I'm like, Oh my God. Like, so what is the right answer? Like, Y'all, everyone's like interpretation of like different apps, like Zoom versus Google Meet versus, I don't know, Microsoft Teams. Like I have seen every combination of people saying, oh, we can't use that because our district said this and that. I've seen it. And like just from different teachers, like all over the U.S. And like, oh, we can't use Google, Google platform at all because of this and that. And I'm like, and then other people are like, that's all we use. So I don't know. I think nobody's on the same page. Like I yeah. think, and even like, even around the planet, like, you know, I'm on some of these groups with teachers from Australia and the UK and like, we're all sharing our, like what this experience that we're all going through. And I mean, man, like, I don't, nobody, I don't know anyone who has their stuff together, like a hundred percent. You have a little but one, right? I do. And I do. And, and has, has your little one started school yet? Oh my God, she did. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. um, I fully intended to keep her home, like fully, 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 fully intended to keep my child home. Mm -hmm. And my dad said he was going to help, you know, since he's retired and he tried so hard, bless his heart. He tried so, so, so hard. And, you know, about a week in, he was like, I just, he was like, he was struggling so bad. Like, he was like, I can't. He was like, I'm trying so hard. He's telling me all the things. The teachers were like, my daughter's teachers were staying till like five to like kind of help us. Because mm -hmm. that's, you know, when I, I'd be like, I will get home as soon as I can so that we can kind of, you know, figure out like, what can we do so that he can, we can get her caught up. Her teachers were really like. And my daughter doesn't work, doesn't go to school in the same district as me. And so they were staying late to like help him, like, you know, online. And it was just really hard for him. And then finally I was like, you know, this isn't going to work. And I was like, I, 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 I would like for her to stay home. I really want her to stay home, but she, she can't. And so I sent her and, you know, she's been in school for a few weeks now and it's not that bad. You know, but she'd been practicing mask wearing since March, oh, okay. like since the very, very, very beginning. Like as soon as like they were like, 
we didn't really know. I was like, well, I'm making masks. Like, I don't, they said that there were no masks. I'm like, well, I can sew, I can make a mask. And it may not look the greatest, but I can make something to cover my mouth. Well, the and mask then, shortage is over. We should, you know, well, like every, yeah. right? But she's been wearing it since then, and she can go a really long time. So I would just practice with her. I'm like, hey, we're getting in the car. Before you get in, you put on your mask. And I've you spoken to this with like a few nurses, and and it's yeah. I mean, it's seen, and anybody that like has to wear it all day for work will tell you there's like an adjustment period, like the first hour of the day where you're like, oh, I can't breathe in this fucking thing, and then <laughs> and then like after that, you kind of forget about it. You know what I mean? And maybe it gets annoying a little bit before lunch, and you go find a corner to eat. You know what I mean, or whatever, and then. So, yeah. And you know what? I can also sympathize with what your dad was going through because, and I remember, see if you can follow me on this. I remember going through school and my, my parents and my grandparents looking at the math, especially the math, I guess all subjects, but especially the math coming home with me and them remarking something along the lines of, well, we didn't do this until, you know, X number grade, you know, it's like maybe <laughs> I was in fourth grade, you know, and I was doing what they were doing in sixth or seventh grade. And I, it seems to me that the same thing is happening now. My daughter is doing math that, you know, my daughter's in fourth grade. My daughter is doing math that I swear to God, I may, maybe I'm not remembering correctly, but I swear to God, this is the math I was doing in sixth and seventh grade. And, and is that like, is that just some kind of like, you know, a generational memory thing or is math actually getting more difficult as time goes on? Oh my God. I'm not a math teacher. Like that is like my worst subject of all time. But it seems pretty <laughs> elaborate. So like, no, it is. And I looked at it and I was like, I looked at her math and I was like, Mm, I kind of <laughs> remember doing this like in second or third grade and you're like in first and like, but then I'm like, but you know what? Y'all might have like more advanced math, but I learned how to write cursive in oh, first yeah. grade. Yeah, that's I learned crazy. How to write cursive first I can't grade. believe, I cannot believe that they're not teaching cursive anymore. And I completely forgot it. I write in, completely in print now. I know I write in a mix and it was a really hard transition when I started teaching because my kids were like, I can't read your handwriting. Like I, and so, and then sometimes, you know, my partner teacher, she's, um, she's a former language arts teacher. And she was like, dude, you write, like, she was like, I can read it. And he was like, and I know you can read it. Cause it's kind of like somewhere between cursive and print. She was like, but sometimes you connect things by like, you don't realize you're doing it. And then like, they can't, they can't always read when you do that, when you, when you go between cursive and print. So you got they, fucking told, huh? Yeah. No, because <laughs> I was writing notes, like writing it down, and she just commented on the side, and she was like, you have to be careful with that. We have to practice, like, you know, writing and, like, print. But most of the time I type everything up. But there is a few instances, like, when I'm using, like, the projector. Um, but I think at this point, I usually the kids only really comment about it for like the first maybe week or two. And then like after a while they get used to my handwriting. And so, I mean, I, I do my best to like be mindful of my handwriting. Um, but sometimes I'm like, shit, y'all just better figure it out. You better just read my handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you better adapt. My, my mother <laughs> writes in, in, in script like all the time and she handed it to me once or she handed me something that she wanted me to read that, he had written down and I'm like, I can't fucking read this. I haven't been able to read this in sixth grade. I was just like, y'all better figure it out. But no, for the most part, like, I think it's just that adjustment that first like week or two that they're like, if, and I try to be, I, again, I just try to be mindful of it, but after a while they don't say anything anymore. And yeah. yeah so then I was like, okay, y'all adapted to me. So I'm moving on and I'm going to write the way I write and you just better figure it out. <laughs> um, we, uh, we, I'm just looking at my notes. We went a little bit out of sequence, but that's a, but, no, that's okay. That's my fault. Uh, but um, so, but you weren't always a teacher, right? No. So, so let's back up a little bit before before you were a teacher. Something led you into teaching, right? Um. Yes. So, so I well, I was a librarian. Mm -hmm. Um. I started my career, my first professional job. I was a librarian. I would say I, I feel like 
I was more of like a library manager. Um, Isn't there like an like an extensive process for becoming like qualified yes. or licensed as yes, an actual that's what librarian? I was like I that's why I was just like I don't like to say librarian, but yeah, that was my title. But I feel like I was more of a library manager. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like. I did everything like I did everything like there was no other person. I was the only person in the building. Um, So I did all of the programming. um, I mean, everything running the whole show volunteers. So you were the Um, manager and like the only employee. What do you mean? I was it like that was it. I was the only person in that building and it was a very big building. Was it a big library? Did it have a large selection? No, it was I would say it was more like a community size. Um, uh-huh. But the building was very big, and it had lots and lots of rooms. Um, empty rooms? The building rooms? itself, lot of, hell yeah, like lots of empty rooms. Like one of the rooms, like the first year I was there, like in 2006, the ceiling caved in after like a hailstorm here in Central Texas. Oh. And like, <laughs> I don't think they ever fully repaired it because – when I would walk, I and I hated walking down like this one certain hallway because everything on that side of the building was abandoned. Um, this building was like made probably, probably right before World War II, I'm guessing, or right during World War II. It was a really, really old building. Gosh, so that would have been like like 30s, 40s, huh? It had to be like it was really old. Um, they did their best with the upkeep, but I mean. The building was pretty, like, you could see, like, it, the bones of it. You could totally tell this is not a new building. Like, this is an old building. Um, I would have constant inspections, and they would see, like, occasionally they'd be like, oh, you have to be careful. Like, that looks like that could get termites, or we got to send someone out here to, ch- to clean for termites. Or especially, like, the rafters is where they would check. Um, but... The hallways, the building was kind of like, I'm going to say like an H shape. Mm-hmm. So if that gives you an idea. A that very sounds fast- like an old, that sounds like a, like an old World War II military base type building. Cause I know like old, old military bases like Fort D.A. Russell in Marfa, Texas and stuff like that had that, that typical H shape. You know, a lot of the barracks were in that like H shape. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think I've I, I think I've seen the kind of building that you're talking about. But anyway, I interrupted. Lots of doors. Mm-hmm. Lots of doors. Um, I had a full set of keys. There had to be about at least twenty doors or more. Um, so because I didn't have anyone, that meant I also did security. You know, checking the building <laughs> when I would leave at night, checking all the windows. Um. I had, so I, it was basically, I was, I've been in, I, my first career was in alternative education. And so my students were a lot older. Um, and so alternative school, isn't that like, uh, like a halfway house between like school and juvie or something? No, they, I think that's a misconception. Uh huh. Um, but more like, I would say let's, just to like preserve like my um my identity i'm gonna say that they fo- they focused more on like well you don't have to answer or like go into any more detail okay yeah. yeah but just alternative education so i was okay. an alternative education at a at a school and you know my students were older so i wasn't teaching like the set i'm teaching now mm-hmm. um i had a team of volunteers that would sometimes stay and help me close but that wasn't always the case especially like during breaks so during breaks I'm on my own like there's nobody and so I'm doing all the paperwork ordering stuff like trying to get everything done for when we come back uh, okay so, yeah and and I guess this was where you well before before we go on let's 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 attack that tangent real quick um how we know each other <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, we we can talk about that too. I was going to talk more about like um, the ISS stuff. Oh, yeah. So that was like my transition job. Like when I left Alternative Ed and I wanted to go into regular, like just a regular school. Um, so they decided, the powers that be, that the library was no longer needed. 
and did it get destroyed no yeah it did not okay. um i don't know what they're using it for anymore but i just know that they they had no plans to have a library anymore and honestly i don't know that i'd ever want to i'm not gonna say never but i feel like i have lots of friends that are you know in that field and if you're not in public libraries and you're not in academic libraries like at a college I don't really feel like libraries are a very secure position um people have different interpretations of what librarians should do and and it'll vary district to district and even like campus to campus like what you know I just feel like when I started, I felt like I was really doing true library work. And as the years went on, you know, I'd go to conferences and things and I'd hear like trends and things and it was slowly becoming something different. And now with COVID, I mean, I think it's out the window now, but. But what do you mean about like not a secure job? Are there politics involved? What makes it uh, a difficult job to keep? I would say the duties entailed can vary greatly and sometimes they can be altered at like many at different times and uh. it may your do, your job duties may not be what you initially signed up to do. It sounds like it can get pretty overwhelming. Yes. So I actually experienced that once in my career. I transitioned from I was under like in in my setting, I was serving a principal, and then they decided that the library was going to go under disciplinary, under the disciplinary system, like the disciplinary department, which mm. was a very unusual fit, but it was a very beautiful fit, to be perfectly honest. I had an amazing boss, um, and we had more funding. When I switched departments, it was a world a world of difference. I suddenly have had more, more time, more money to do what I really wanted, but it came at a cost because that meant I also had to do like disciplinary stuff. Um, What do you mean disciplinary stuff? um, (laughs) Whenever a student would get into trouble, Uh I would kind of serve like as a mini magistrate. So I got training Mm -hmm. to sit on these boards with like, I don't know, like maybe five or six people Mm. and review paperwork for people and call the student in and go over their things like to discuss what happened. Did you have to take a stern? Because I've been in ISS before. (laughs) (laughs) Did you have to like take an especially stern tone with them where something that whereas you wouldn't do with like just a kid out in the normal population? So when you're on those boards, you don't you need to provide people with like due process or something as if that makes any sense, you know, you need to listen to the story and be as neutral as possible. Um, And then like the board, I never really had to make, I've been on both sides. When I was training, I got to be like just one of the people that was there deciding the outcome. And then eventually I just became like the person that sat at the front. And, you know, I just was the one that made sure everybody signs that, you know, that everything was reviewed. Yeah, it very, it's, it's very much like an intro to prison vibe when you're in ISS. <laughs> Going over that, but I, that wasn't when I was in ISX, actually. So then that was the I alternative left, stuff. Yeah, that was still alternative. Uh-huh. Um, so when I knew my job was leaving, when I, I knew that it was coming because they had like, a lot like it was like the only way I can describe it it's like the fucking Titanic (laughs) and like the rats fleeing you know going in the opposite direction of the water there was an (laughs) exodus of managers that suddenly left Uh including someone that had been there like almost 20 years and I remember thinking you need to fucking leave like you need to leave now like it's coming like there's going to be changes um the company that was running the alternative education program I was working for, um, it ended up switching hands. And that's when I knew that I wasn't going to have a job, but I loved my boss. Like I loved working for my boss. I had the most amazing boss. She was like a second mom to me. And I was 
I, I think that's with a lot of jobs. It's I didn't always want to leave. the it's always the people that make it worth staying. You can have a badass job, but if you work with a bunch of assholes, it's like not even worth it. Yeah, I was like, no, I I don't want to leave, and I was hoping that something would happen, like a miracle would happen. I don't know what I was waiting for. I lost my grandmother around that time, and then I had actually gone on an interview to just hightail it out of there, just to get the hell out. And I chose, I I bombed the interview. Like I just was not, my grandma had just died the day before. Uh. I wasn't in the right place to go to that interview, but I went and, and then I was just like, I can't do this. Like I'm not in the right place. Yeah. And so I waited too long and it was getting down to the wire, like about staying and if and but if I stayed, I knew I couldn't stay at the library. I'd have to go find another position at work. And I just I, there was nothing. I looked. I remember I pulled out the phone book and I started looking at all of the other like you know people's titles to see like because I had an idea of what ones which ones were open. And I was like, I don't want to do any of this. Like this isn't what I want to do. Like this is not for me. And yes, there were teaching jobs there. But I didn't feel like I mixed well with that department because I hadn't been in that department for a really long time by then. Like, I'd already been gone from that department for years. And I just didn't feel like that fit me. Like what you said, like, it really, I really, if you switch managers, like you could work for the same company and like, it's not the same. It's not. And I was like, if I'm going to switch, then I might as well just leave. Like, if I'm going to be doing teaching, then I might as well just go teach somewhere else. And, you know, I just didn't feel like that was, that department was a good fit for me. And so. Were there other factors? And I think that at this point, well, finish your idea. Yeah. But I mean, that was it. Like I was like, I'm leaving. Like I waited, I but I waited too long. And so when I started applying for jobs, like at schools, I was, I waited too long. Like I missed the boat to find a prime job that I really, really wanted, which is what I have now. I love my job. Like I love what I teach and I love my school. Um, I waited too long, like just straight up. I missed the window of when people start applying for teaching jobs and cause I was still grieving and hoping that something would change. And then by the end of did the your summer, grandma like help raise you? Were you particularly close to your grandma? Oh my gosh. Um, my grandma lived with us for a good chunk of my life. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I was, my family was very close at one point. They're not so close anymore, but growing up, yes. Um, she was a really big part of my life and she lived with us like for most of my, a good chunk of my childhood. I wouldn't say all of my childhood, but a good chunk. And then I would spend my summers at her home, which is now my home. Um, I just, it did was, you guys inherit it? Was it like an inheritance or what? Like, did you guys have to uh, pay like a, just oh, out of curiosity? I had, we had, it was, so my dad actually was the one who. Cause this who is the house that, that ha a lot of that stuff happened, right? Yeah. So okay. my dad, this home was a gift to my grandmother from my step grandfather. And um, when they got divorced, my dad bought the house like he bought it out. Uh, yeah, because there was like a balance or something. Yeah. So he went ahead and he bought the house. Um, and I love and older. I'm, homes. I'm giving you like the truncated version. Yeah. But when I got pregnant right before I got pregnant, my parents moved and they were you know, they wanted my mom wanted her dream home. And so my dad got her her dream home and my my apartment the apartment we were living in it was going sky high like when we started living there it was like oh no 700 bucks for a one bedroom apartment yeah and, i think I that mean, by I the time pregnant. we stopped by the time we stopped renting it was like about a thousand for like an average yes. apartment it was eleven hundred dollars for that one bedroom within three years of us living there it had increased that much in three years and I was like, no, for that, we might as well just move. And as it happened, the house was free. So I we took out a loan and we started making improvements to the house. And so That's it was it was just a good it was the perfect time that it came available. Yeah. I mean, at at, at the time, it was like, you know, we could be paying a monthly, you know, mortgage on, for what we're paying on rent. 
you know what i mean and that and that we'd be just be building equity so at that point we started looking for homes and similar kind of story i ended up buying uh our uh our parents home my my parents home and uh, really? yeah and so we ended up in that same situation but yeah by the and and obviously over the years with taxes that you know that figure has gone up but you know when we bought with the va loan as you probably know and everything you know that that, that low interest rate in addition to um you know the equity that our parents kind of gave us you know they gave us a little bit of equity um to start out and so you know it was a it was a better deal but i yeah i totally get it yeah i love it i'm so happy that i get to be here <laughs> um when you were at the library would you say that the the creepy stuff uh contributed to your decision to leave oh no 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 you, we should get into that part of the podcast now so yeah. so you've had you're a paranormal experiencer that's how we brought you in and you've had like a bunch of uh, just weird things happen to you over the years am i right yeah i mean I, I you know you're the first person who ever called me an experiencer <laughs> i just think i'm just one of those people that weird shit happens to and i always tell people i'm like you know don't even worry about it because if anything weird is going to happen it's going to fucking happen to me it's not going to be you you're good <laughs> <laughs> What was the, and I meant to prep you for this question oh. and I didn't, and I'm sorry, but, um, so you might have to like work on some recall real quick, but what would you say, do you have, what's your first memory of, of just anything weird? Like, do you, is there something that you saw as a child or I don't know, aliens knock on your door? Like how, oh, like what's your first memory with weird shit? Okay. Um, you know, okay. So I was a little bit older. I, I mean, I always could feel like people's vibes mm -hmm. and that's the only way I can describe it. Just, I can feel people's vibes and it can really affect me emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, and so ISS was really hard for me because people aren't in a stable place when they're usually in the ISS room for mm -hmm. that one year. It was so draining for me. Um, but I've always been able to feel the tones of people. They don't have to say anything. You don't have to say a word to me. You're an empath. Um, You're an empath. Yeah, I, I've been told that. Um, and it's really draining, especially um, I had a patron that was, I, I did not know about this, but like an emotional vampire. And like they never, they wouldn't even really talk to me or anything. But I started kind of noticing a pattern. Like every time this one student would come to the building, I mean, I'd be fine, like working, doing everything I had to do, and then it would leave, and I would feel so. It felt like I had gone from like a hundred percent to zero, like if your cell phone battery just drained, and I was like, "What's going on with me?" Like I started feeling like this this can't be right, and I started noticing it would happen every time this one student came, and like they weren't even near me. Like I I don't I can't explain it, but like that was the only thing I could think of is that they were some type of like emotional vampire. I don't know. That but is so was... crazy. Like, um, a student mentioned it to be honest, like another student had said something about like their energy. And I'm like, so I'm not the only one feeling this. Like this isn't, this can't be a coincidence. How um, fucking bizarre. Do you think he was like a demon or something? I don't know. But like, it was just, it was just so I, it, and it took a while for me to notice the pattern. I don't want you to think I picked it up even on the third or fourth or fifth time. This yeah, like you're profiling this kid. It's like, ah, this kid's Mexican. Something's, something's not right. <laughs> it, it, it just started, it started to become noticeable. And then when that other kid mentioned it, one of my volunteers, I was like, they said something about the energy in the room just going out. And I was like, I'm not the only one who felt that. Like, and I never told anybody like how I felt like, just to be clear, like that was just me typing on the computer. And like, they just said it in passing when they were like coming with the book truck. And I was like, okay. Like I just mentally made a note, like this isn't just you. I wonder. <laughs> man, there are like, people like that. People that can just consume the energy around them. Like, but was there a diabolical sense to this fucking kid or. Like, I'd like, what do you mean by like 
like a draining energy like I like, don't was know. It... Like he doesn't. He wasn't. He was pretty quiet, and like he kept to himself. Like I mean, it wasn't like he was coming chatting us up or anything, but like he would sit in the room and like I don't know what it was about this one specific child or I wouldn't mm. say a child, but like you know, teen. He could really consume the energy of the whole room just by being there, and I don't. I I've never experienced that very many times in my life. Um, but I would, but going back to your initial thing about mm-hmm. the first time, cause I don't want to delve too much in the library just yet. The uh-huh. first time that I can consciously remember like the moment, like I had broke, my boyfriend had broke up in, with me in high school and I was just really upset, mm-hmm. like really, really like upset, crying and all that shit. And I was in my room. What grade was this? Uh, like junior year of high school okay junior year um so like 16 and so i'm an only child and you know there's no one else in here like it's just me and at the time my dad had purchased this like i don't know maybe like freshman year he was he he bought a lock for my room so i don't know why but there wasn't a lock at the time on the door i think so they like to, this little, like to like, lock you in or to keep for, me, to, for, for you to, to lock, lock for me to have privacy to lock my room. Holy shit. I asked him, I guess I asked him, I can't remember how we got it, but they went ahead and they purchased the little lock and they installed it and they didn't ask, you know, I guess my dad realized, you know, I'm a teen. I want more privacy and they didn't give me anything, I guess for safety. Like, you know, if someone were to break in, at least my door would be locked. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. So they, and I mean, I was a good kid for them. I would say I was a really good kid. So it wasn't like I was, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to say, but like, yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I did do things I wasn't supposed to do in this room. With as that all lockdown. teenagers do. As all teenagers do. I did do some things, but the lock, I mean, I always felt like more secure when I was asleep or at home alone. And you know what? I guess that was another thing. I was starting to be home alone more. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they were fine with the lock. And I had this really tall bookcase. Mm-hmm. And at the very top, I had this little angelic looking um, musical, musical, um, what is it called? Like a music it's, box? Sort of. But yeah. she was she was made out of porcelain and you like a ballerina her. dancer. Yeah. And it yeah. goes around. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. So I had one of those and it was an angel and I've had it for years and years and years. And I'm crying in bed being like all a baby about this breakup. And I mean, I must've been really into it because the, the bookcase was like on the other side of the room. Like it, and my room is pretty big. Um, and then all of a sudden I hear the little, dun, and then I hear it again, dun, and then the, the fucking fuck? music, no, 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 then the music box starts turning, like the little, like the little porcelain thing starts spinning and I'm like, holy shit, like <laughs> what the fuck? I look, I look. And I mean, I've got tears in my eyes, but I have definitely stopped crying. I look up and it stops and I'm like, holy shit. And I wipe my eyes and I'm like, what the hell just happened? Like it it snapped me out of it. Like I wasn't crying anymore and I wasn't thinking about the breakup anymore. Um, That only happened once. Um, with the doll, with the little music, you know, with the little porcelain doll. Um, but it definitely was like creepy because again, I mean, I'm alone in my room and nobody else is in here. Most certainly not reaching to the top of a dusty bookcase to, to, to wind the doll. And also you're like at, um, what is it called? Poltergeist age, right? Where it's like that, that age range of like teenage girls from like 13 to like 16 and like weird shit happens with them all the time. Like, especially when they're going through puberty and they're hormonal and stressed out. It's like, like it fucks with like the quantum parts of the brain. And then you just, you guys just start breaking shit. 
Well, that's funny you mention it because every place I've worked at with the exception, knock on wood, of my current employment, the lights, um, the light switches, the light switches, the lamps, like the, the lights above my desk habitually go out, like frequently when I'm stressed out, I have to put in work orders all the time. And so towards the end of my like employment as a library, as a librarian or library manager, I like to think I'm a library manager. When you're stressed out. So like, so like you break shit with your mind when you're stressed out. I don't know. Like the lights with the lamps go out a lot. And like in ISS, I was, I mean, that was a really high stress job. And like the lamp would flicker all the time and the kids would be like, I was here last year. It never did that. And I was like, I don't know. I'm like, I guess I'll put in a work order. And I'm like, and luckily this, you know, I have a new place and maybe it was just a coincidence that it happened like at two different places, but it was always directly above my desk. All the other lamps would be fine. Just the one over my desk would start to go out like a lot. Um, yeah, you know, and people say that it's genetic in a lot of cases, right? Or like they, they there's a theory out there, like oh, in as paranormal things go, like there's theories out there associated with, like, uh, what's it called, uh, telekinesis, and uh, and like gen- like genetics. So there's a couple of things like that in the paranormal world that seem to be associated with genetics. I think I was talking to Adam about this last time, or one of one of the guys that's been on the podcast before. And they said, uh, they said that we're talking about aliens and it seems that like aliens always like go after like a certain lineage or family. Please don't include me in that. Cause you know, I'm like terrified of aliens. <laughs> I'm so terrified of aliens, like so terrified. But you've like, never had an alien experience or like lights in the sky or anything like that. You know, there was this one time, like, when my husband was deployed, I saw lights like in the woods um, in a nearby neighborhood, not like here at my house. And I got a picture of it, but I don't even know where it is anymore. Like it's like on an old phone somewhere. But like I was like, eh, probably some nerds playing with like lights in the woods. And I, I mean, it wasn't high. It was pretty low. And I didn't give it a second thought. Like I was like, shit. I'm it didn't on. seem like flashlights. No, they were kind of like glowy, but I, I mean, I really don't think so. Like, I think it was something like, like you said, probably people in the woods, but no, I don't know. I like don't a, fa- know. a flashlight is pretty like, di- like distinct. I don't know. I mean, if I had the picture, like I have nothing to like show for it. Like for the one time that like I saw something crazy or something possibly but i just don't think so well i'm glad you I brought think... up pictures because you sent me a few and i did i did so uh, uh what which one do you want to attack first so i can bring it up on this you'll see this later well you know so my husband is over here like writing down on paper okay so <laughs> he... oh was... that's not fair you have your own jamie you have your own like podcast assistant so he's reminding me, like, we should take it back a little bit before okay. you show pictures. Okay. Um, so for a while, like, my parents had another property, a really old, I don't want you to think, like, oh, my God, they're, like, rolling in dough. Like, no, it was just an old, old, old place, like, in, like, a really poor neighborhood by a river. And I, I chose to live there when I was in college because I wanted to be on my own. And I was like, I'm ready to take on responsibility and pay rent and do these things. And so I, and we stayed there for a while, like the first, I don't know, maybe three or four years of my marriage and at the beginning. And I remember we were getting ready because I was finally, I had a big girl job and we were going to go to Paris. And so I was all excited and I'm packing my suitcase and I'm alone because my husband was working overnight. So I'm always alone. Like I was always alone. And I'm on the phone with my best friend. And I'm just telling her like, oh my God, I can't wait. You know, we're going back and this is going to be exciting. And I look up from the floor because I'm in the living room. 
And my dad, being who he is, he put like this, I'm just going to say like the back door was pretty exposed and he was really paranoid. So he installed like this massive padlock from the inside of the was house. It, was it like a screen door like that comes out in Texas Chainsaw Massacre? <laughs> it was no, like just like a screen the back, door. The back door of the house, it was kind of like a, a really like old door. Um cheap so my dad just didn't feel safe with that door being exposed like anyone could just walk up and open the door and go inside the house so he installed this really big padlock I would say it was the size of like a book on the, on the back but you could open it and I had the key of course from inside the house just not from outside does that make sense yeah 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 so there's really no way and like we had um We had, there was several, there was two rooms and a bathroom and the laundry area. And so the back room, we had this big giant dresser up against the window because my dad was like, you're home alone. Like all the time. My dad's always like trying to protect me. He was like, you're always home alone. He was like, you need to like, make sure like all the windows, like, you know, people can't just come in if you're coming home late. Cause I worked late as a librarian. I did work late. I would get off like at eight o'clock at night or eight 30. Um, and like early in my career, I was, again, I'm a little bit of a workaholic. I like stayed till nine o'clock. Did you like that existence of being like alone all day at work and then coming home and being alone and like, like, is it, are you, would you consider yourself an introvert to where you're, um, well accustomed to that? I'm pretty accustomed to it. Um, people say I'm very social. Um, I, and I've been told that like twice this week, they're like, you know, you're very social. And I'm like, yeah, I I don't know. I'm some hybrid between introvert and extrovert. Mm -hmm. I do like my space, but um, yeah, I'm usually really talkative and, and people usually come and say hi to me in my room. Like, I don't know. I think I'm somewhere right between the two, but no, being on my own, I'm just used to it. And I think maybe that's part of being an only child Uh being on your own. Um, It doesn't bother me. I think some people, it really bothers them, but it doesn't really bother me. Um, yeah, my little one's an only child. I, I feel bad for her sometimes. Yeah, I'm like, but I have lots of cousins, like so, so many cousins. Yeah, she does I was too. never, I was never alone to say like, oh my God, I have no one to play with or no one to do things with or go on vacations with. Like my family was very close knit and we were always together. Like I experienced the sibling-esque feel of my cousins. And having wars with them, even up until we were in our 20s. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But back to the library. Yeah, back to the library. Oh, no, 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 the the, the room. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back to the room. So I'm in the living room packing, getting ready to go to Paris. And I look up and, like, my heart stops. Because I see the light in the guest room turn on. Oh, that's fucking horror movie shit, dude. I'm like, holy shit. And I'm on the phone with my best friend, and I don't let on that anything's going on. So I just keep on, like, pretending like I'm packing. You wouldn't have be like, holy fuck, bro. The light in the living room just turned no. on. No. <laughs> L- let me tell you what I did. I get up. I act like I'm going to get more shit. I get my purse. I get my keys. And I go out the door, and I get in the car, and I turn it on. And I tell her, holy shit. Like, there's someone <laughs> in the fucking house. And she was like, what do you mean there's someone in the fucking house? Like, there's someone in the fucking house. Like, there's someone else in this house. Like, I'm not alone. And I'm like, the light just freaking turned on. Like, I saw it with my own two eyes. And so I called 911. I said, I got to go. I'm going to call 911. Oh, you, so, so you thought it was, like, still human. You Like, you didn't go there yet. Yes. Okay. I called. I called the police. And, like, the police came. And, like... They hurried the hell out of there as quickly as they could. They went through the whole place. They said, there's nobody here. And the guy, the police even said, like, there's even a padlock on the back door. Like, there's no way someone could have gotten in. And I was, he was like, they were like, uh, faulty wiring. And they left. They left me alone. And I was like. You think they, did they seem freaked out? Like, they knew something was up? I don't know, up? but one of them, he just kind of looked I think one of them kind of looked a little freaked out, like, because he was trying to figure out how, like, some how the light could have turned on. 
and I'm over here like shaking. Was he the younger or older one? Were they similar was, in age? They were they were younger, so prob but they were older than me, so probably like in their early thirties. Okay. And like, they looked at each other and they looked at me, and they could tell I was visibly shaken. And they were just like, "There's no way someone could." And like, there's no way someone could have gotten in. What like, else? What else happened at that house? Um, that was like probably like one of the scarier things. Um. Okay. Like I remember. You said, wait, you I sound you, you're you're pausing. You sound like you got some fucked up shit to say. Yeah. So over time, I know this is crazy. Like, and it sounds crazy. And this has kind of gone from like two houses. That's why we're there's here. Been, there, yeah. There's been times that I swear that my husband has just like entered a room, and I go, and he's not there. He's like in a totally different room. And this has happened since that first, the first house we lived in. And I'm like, I'm over here talking, and I'm like, wait, I literally just saw you walk in here, <laughs> like. So you think whatever this is, it it follows you a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Um. I don't know. I, I just don't know. Like I couldn't even say, um, but I will, I will start with the library now. Yeah. Well, um, uh, some of the, are some of these pictures from the library? Yes. So, so which one? So probably, I'm guessing you're looking at probably a vent and then my office. Yeah. So let's let, let me pull the vent up and I'm going to put it on the screen. Look later. Uh, okay, so we're looking at the vent. When you sent me this, I was looking at it. I was like, oh, fuck, there's like some eyes or like a baby spleen hanging out, and I'm just not seeing it yet. <laughs> well, so what are we looking at? Okay, so that vent leads into uh, the abandoned hallway that I told you about. Mm -hmm. So the building's like an H shape. And it's on the side was, of was the down. Was the abandoned hallway like the left arm, the right arm, or the bridge? I would say it was the right arm. Like it was bridge, one of the arms. The yeah. bridge is very fat, by the way. The oh, bridge okay. is very, very, very fat. It's not. It's not very skinny, but it's very broad. Okay. Um. So we're on the we're, we're on the side that's condemned, the side that had the hail damage, and like there's fucking like ceiling hanging into these rooms, and it has asbestos in it. So like oh, I think I was shit. to be honest, I was probably more scared of the asbestos than I was of anything else that could have possibly been in that building yeah because it causes uh, cancer we should say for some of our zoomers and late millennials <laughs> right asbestos is a building material they used to use to insulate buildings and it's cancerous as fuck or carcinogenic uh, as fuck so if you're ever in a building just fyi that happens to have asbestos so really really old buildings um you don't want to fucking sweep the floor if you see broken tile um, you're going to want to pour water over it and then you can sweep it while it's wet. It sucks that you should even have to deal with it. Somebody in charge should have like brought that up. Like they're like asbestos was supposed to be removed, like in the eighties from like all it buildings. Wasn't, it wasn't Joel. It wasn't. And so I have all these pictures in my phone that I saved. I'm like, one of these days, if I get cancer, I have these fucking pictures to prove that this shit was in the building. And I have all these pictures and they eventually did renovate it. Um, but I had already been there like almost the entire 10 years that I was there. I was actually there like 12, I think. Yeah. And um, I saved photos of like building renovations and like exposed tiles. And I just, I just always wanted to be able to say like, Hey, like it was there. And this is like the date that it happened or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was more scared of the asbestos than anything else. Um, but so about like this, this vent though. Yes. So we're leading up to a Christmas break uh -huh. and um, I'm a younger employee. I don't have any kids. So everyone's pretty much requesting off for like, you know, the two weeks. Uh -huh. And again, no kids, husband's working. So why would I want to even take off? Like, why would I want to use my vacation time? Because it was, it's not like a traditional school where the teachers are automatically off. You have to apply to be off and you have to use your PTO. So huh. I, um, it's basically year round school. Yeah. And I was like, well, shit, I ain't going to take off. Like why? So I was like, I have stuff to do. Like I have books I have to do and things to keep up with and, um, lots of computer work, like 
lots of computer work. So I was over there trying to like, I think I was probably like, I probably had a cataloging order. I don't know. But I went ahead and I was like, I will volunteer to work for the break. And so that Christmas was one of the smallest skeleton crews that I had ever witnessed in the time I was there. So, and I'm talking bare bones. Like if you went outside, there was nobody in the distance. Like everyone had requested off for that holiday. Mm. So I was like, well, you know, I remember looking outside and thinking there's nobody here. And so I went to my room and I'm typing. I left the front door to the building open and when you have to pass by my office to go into the, into the, into the building, just FYI. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a little cool. So I probably like, I closed it, but I didn't, you know what I mean? Like you could come in, but the door, you know what I mean? You, it was like a jar. It was just slightly was ajar, a jar. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, you could hear it. The, the doors were metal so you can hear it. So before break, um, we had a building inspection and the building inspector was like, and this was early in my career, by the way, like mm-hmm. early in the time when I arrived, he was like, who has the keys to these double doors? And, and this is on the abandoned hallway. And I said, well, I gave him all my keys and I'm like, you can try all of them. That's all I was given. Mm-hmm. And he was like, well, we need to fix that because that's, um, he tried to open it from the inside and it was really like, it was really kind of rusted. Cause I don't think people, we weren't using that side of the building. And I was like, he was like, we'll work on it when we come back from, from winter break. And I said, okay, not a problem. I was like, I'm just showing you, these are the only keys I have. I thought, I just assumed that y'all had them. Um, no one ever opens it and we can't even really open it. So I didn't give it a second thought. And so I'm at my computer typing away and I just got this feeling that someone's staring at me. This is the story you told me over messenger one. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right. I, I get this feeling that something, something, someone's looking at me and I, I mean, have you ever had that feeling? That yeah. Yeah. I think that? everybody has. Yeah. And I'm like, there's nobody here. And I, I keep typing and I just. Did the hair on it. your arms raise? Did you get that yeah. kind of. Yeah. That's Actually, an ugly feeling. Actually on the feeling. back of my neck. The back of my neck. Ugh. And I was like, I, I, I tried to keep working. So I worked through, I don't know, a while longer. And I just couldn't shake it. And it was getting stronger. Like. I mean, the only way I could describe it is like you're baking something in the oven and it's starting to cook and you're starting to smell it in the whole house. And I'm like, I'm really feeling it. It's not getting, it's not minimizing. It's getting worse, that feeling that I'm being looked at. And it's not a, it's not a positive, whoever's looking at me isn't giving off positive vibes. And I, I kind of, I kind of start to freak out a little bit. Um, I went ahead and I stood up and I went to the door of my office and I look out towards the library, the rest of the library, and I can feel the direction it's coming from. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's coming from that vent area. So the whole hall behind that vent is a long hallway. It's the H and it has exits on each side and it has doors. So there's like room one, room two, room three. And mind you, it's got, there's a lot of doors over there, but there's only really one, two, three exits leading out Mm -hmm. of that H, but there's lots of doors between them, but they don't lead outside. Outside. Uh I got you. So, and I'm really conscientious. I was always, you know, like I told you, I'm pretty, I was pretty much my own security guard too. So I would check the building when I arrived, make sure everything's locked before I go in and then do the reverse when I leave. And, and and so just real quick to bring it to the vent, this vent kind of it's connected tall. like the two hallways, right? The two long hallways or, or it went from no, the... It, it's leading out of the bridge into the H. Ah, so okay. it's leaving the main central part of the library going to one of those, to the H on the right-hand side. Uh, the abandoned part. Yes. And uh, so that okay. vent is really tall. Like it's, it's floor to ceiling. Basically, you're only looking at one of the sections, the right. section where I got that vibe from. Um, Did you ever go in and look at it pixel by pixel and try to see anything aberrant? Oh, or... no, 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 no. 
I t- this is after the fact. This picture is ex post facto. Okay. Like this picture, like. I wanted to remember it. I Damn, busting out the it. Latin. Let me let me go find my graduation <laughs> cap, dude. <laughs> I was like, I needed a picture of it. Like, I needed yeah. to remember like this moment. And like, even though it was years, the photo you're looking at is years into the future. Like, this is like right before I left, and it was one of the things I took a picture of. I was like, I just, I want to remember. Like, I don't know why I want to remember it. Yeah. But I just wanted proof that that vent existed. When it happened, and did you I didn't see take anything? A photo of it. So, oh, I that would have been fucked door. up. No, I would have been too have afraid to look look I at a picture of a it. Camera. I didn't have a camera. Uh-huh. Um, or I did have a camera, I guess, but it wasn't like it wasn't like in vogue to like take pictures. Like you know, like the way it is now with your phone. Right. It wasn't really used that way in the like mid 2000s like it was you know for I mean? portraits and memories and candid yeah. yeah yeah i don't know it's not like it is now yeah so and it, i didn't have a smartphone i had like i think i had a razor probably or something oh. um that was the height of phones before the <laughs> smartphone came out it came out you had a razor it was like oh shit that was like a I, huge step up from the nokia i did have a nokia at some <laughs> I, in like in when i was in high school but <laughs> You were like one of the ghetto kids then. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, I didn't want anyone to know I had a cell phone. Oh my Dude, god! No, say what nobody. you want to, but that Nokia was badass. You could text. It was, it was pretty you, badass. I dropped it so many times it never broke, and it Dude, never I, lost. Charge. And I miss those songs, like the little ringtones. <laughs> <laughs> the no- Nokia had the best ringtones, dude. Oh my god! Yeah, but I had one in high school, and I told nobody because I stayed out too late with a boy, <laughs> and my dad got pissed. He was like, because I left a basketball game with somebody and I didn't tell anybody who I was going with and nobody could find me. The next day, my dad drove me to, and it was before T-Mobile, it was voice stream. He drove us to voice stream and he got me a phone. He was like, this phone will be on you at all times. I told nobody. Nobody knew I had a cell phone. Like, I didn't want anyone to know because it was so embarrassing that I had a tether and nobody else did. What do you mean a tether? I considered that phone a tether. Oh, I yeah. considered it like my parents could call because my dad said this phone will be on you at all times. And he was like, and if we call you answer. And I was like, okay. So I told nobody. I don't want anyone to know I had one because no one else had a phone. It wasn't like very few people had cell phones then. Why, di- and- why didn't you like lie and be like, oh, I got like a shipment coming in and, I, you know, or just like try to like make up like a <laughs> drug dealer thing just I to make yourself seem, seem cooler. <laughs> Some of the girls, because I was on the dance team, knew I had one, um, but they knew I never, like, I never talked on it. Like, I just had it um, in secret. Like, I kept it in my purse, and nobody asked to use it. I just, I don't know. I just thought, like, nobody else had the phone. I felt like it, I didn't look at it as a status symbol. Yeah. It wasn't, because, I don't know, just not many people had them back then, just to be real. Like, they didn't. But anyways, like we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Back. To, so I'm standing back to the back to the library. So I'm standing in my office door, in the threshold. Is that the picture I'm looking at right now? The the office. Like what? Like yeah. okay. So explain this so picture real quick. See. Give us give us a, a reference of where we are. Is this? So this... you can see my. You can see the computer. You can see where the computer is through the window. To the like right. Can, yeah. Yeah. And so you can see that from the vent. I took that photo of what whoever or whatever was looking at me. You had the balls to go there? Yeah. Like, I did it. Like, I'm, I'm about to tell you what I did. I eventually, before I left, I, I mean, I always had to go in the hall. I had to check all the doors every day. So eventually I just got over it um, after many, many years. Um, for a while there, I would send volunteers to go like check. I'm like, can y'all go check and make sure? And like, I wouldn't say anything, but like, a, got- like, like a supernatural wellness check. I was like, can y'all just go check and double check that all the doors are locked and people would and people like, I don't want to go in the spooky hallway. And I never told them they're like, it's spooky over there. It's scary. And I'm like, just go check. Dude, they were <laughs> picking up the here. vibes. They were picking up the energy. People always said it. And I had kids like, you know, over the years, you get new students and like people say the same thing. It's a spooky hallway and I haven't told them and they just know like something isn't right. 
So I'm standing there and I'm, I stood there for five minutes. Like I swear it felt like five minutes. Oh my God. It probably, it probably was 60 seconds, but I felt like minutes and I'm standing there looking in the direction of the vent. And I'm like, why do you torture yourself like that? That sounds oh like, God, like, like so psychological I... torture. Have you ever heard that French term, uh, la pelle du vide? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. What does that mean? It, it, it means the call of the void. And it's like, um, a name or I don't know what you would call it, but it's like, it's a name for that sensation you get when you're standing on a cliff and you think to jump. Or you see uh, a, a gun on a cop's holster and you imagine something horrible happening or doing something horrible. with it. It's just like that call to self-destruction, that little inner voice that well, says, then, do it. Then I'm the girl in the scary movie who does stupid shit because I stood there looking in that direction and I got my ass and I walked across the library floor and I parked myself within five feet of that vent. Yeah, that's and I psycho. Stood there. Yeah, I know. And I stood there for five <laughs> looking at that vent. And it was just getting stronger the closer I got. Why? And let me get, was, let, take me into your head for a second. I can't. I'm sorry. I can't. I, I, I cannot let this go. So <laughs> you, you, you decided to do this. I'm not fucking crazy, Joel. Like, I want to know that this is not my imagination. I want to know that this is real and that I want to get to the bottom of it. I should have just called the security building that there's someone else in the building, but I didn't want to sound like that fucking crazy person. Like I'm telling you, like I don't want to. Sound <laughs> so I want to prove that it's in my fucking head. I can go. Once I realize that this isn't real, I can go back to my desk and I can keep on working and move on. I, so I no, nah, I think you're full of shit. I think like, <laughs> I, I think that you wanted to be scared just like every child who like first, like takes a liking to horror movies. You wanted to fuck with yourself. Well, it gets better because I stood at the end of the book stack. You can't see it in that picture, I don't think. I see um, a book stack straight ahead. Okay, so I'm standing there looking at the vent. <laughs> I'm like, do I open the door or do I not open the door? Do I open the door or do I not open the door? And finally, I make my decision that I'm going to fucking open that door. I just need to get it over with. And I didn't even have a cell phone or a phone in my hand. I was just going to open the door. So I put my hand on the door. And, well, first let me backtrack. I'm standing in front of the vent at this point. I'm like nose to nose. And I can tell whatever it is is looking down at me and I'm looking up at it. Like I'm looking like, I don't know how I knew to look in that direction. But whatever it is, is looking in my eyes and I'm looking at its eyes. I cannot see any eyes because of the vent, the way the, the way it's obscured. Whatever's on the opposite side has full view of the, of the, of the room. But me on the opposite end looking towards the vent, I can't see anything other than the vent in front of me. Yeah, like, the, like the previous picture we just saw. Yeah. So I'm standing there and I'm within inches of that vent and I've got my hand on the door. And I'm looking up like, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna is the vent it. over the door? The vent is right next to the door. Okay. There's a door right next to that vent. Now, on the opposite end of that vent is the hallway. It's just a free hallway. Um, the vent, I think, is used to facilitate like air circulation throughout the building. Um, but it doesn't lead into an actual like tube or anything. The vent leads into the hallway. The, the next hallway. Yeah. 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 So... I put my hand on the door and I'm going to fucking turn it. I turned the, I'm not, oh my God, I can't believe I fucking did this. I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> I, I turn the vent, like I'm about to open the door and within seconds, those double doors that have been like sealed off shut, they burst open and I see sun. Like I can suddenly see everything in that hallway because the wait, sun. Wait, 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 back up. They burst open by themselves or when yes, you open? Yes, they burst. No, no, I hadn't opened the door to the hallway yet. I put my hand and I'm turning it because whatever's on the opposite side can't come to me because the door is locked from the opposite side. From me, I can go in that hallway because it's an exit technically. So I can turn the knob and go that way because it's an exit. But anyone who's on the other side of that hallway, if you get in the hallway, you can't come back without a key because the door's locked. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy 
So yeah. I was safe in that sense. And I mean, maybe that's why I wasn't so scared because I knew for a fact whatever's on the other side of that door can't come to me because the damn door's locked. Uh -huh. I had full control because I could open and turn the door. And so, because it's getting close to five o'clock when this happened, by the way. And I turn it, I, I mean, I have my hand on the door, I'm turning it just ever so slightly. And the next thing I know, like the doors to the exit leading out of the building, they burst open. The ones that nobody had the keys to, the ones that are sealed shut and nobody can open. Holy They shit. burst open and the light just flooded the whole hallway. And I ran to the window, which is to the right of the vent. And I look out and then I run. I start running out the front door because the door, the front door is just like, a few steps that way, like in the opposite direction of the, of the hallway towards my, towards my office, but to the right. Yeah. Yeah. So you start so running start, to that door. I start running to the front of the building and I look and I look everywhere and there isn't a single person in sight, not even a car. What do you think it was? I don't know. I don't want to know. Like <laughs> some creepo that was going to rape me or kill me. I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell you to this day what it was. Nah, dude, that sounds supernatural to me. Like I like the the idea of a person being back there like never even entered my mind. I don't know, maybe I just go there automatically, but it, it seems I was to me not alone. Let's just agree I wasn't alone. Whether it was a supernatural <laughs> or a fucking psycho person that was going to murder me. There was someone else in that building staring at me. No, it's Something Halloween, dude. Fun. We're going to put a diabolical spin on this. There was like a fucking like demon back there and like Gabriel or Michael or Uriel or one of those guys bust in and just saved your ass, dude. Oh, my God. It was fucking. That was one of the scariest, most intense moments of my life. So I'm going to fast forward about two years later. I'm getting ready to. It's another winter break. It's a smaller one where most of the people have left. Not as small as that first one, that first winter break where I'm alone. Is this like, associated cool. with the with the other two pictures? No, uh, no, that's something different. Okay, all right, continue. Okay, so I'm in the building alone by myself. I've been in there a million times alone, and now I'm already past like that really scary situation that happened, and I'm alone on winter break. And at this point, um, but I'm not that alone because as luck would have it, that winter break, they decided they were going to do renovations in the building. They're going to paint and they scaffolded. Now, this is going to scare some people. Um, at least they would probably be freaked out to be in a building. Imagine that you have scaffolding, you know, those big, tall scaffolds from because mm. the, the ceiling was really high. So they have these big scaffolds and they're metal and they've got ladders built onto them and they go across. I can't remember what they were doing, but everything is sheeted off with plastic. So mm -hmm. the whole library, except for my office, is like a plastic. It looks just like a shower curtains everywhere. Mm -hmm. Plastic covering the whole damn place. And like even multiple layers over things. So you can't really see across the library anymore. Um, does that make sense? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all sheeted off. And like, I don't know, that kind of freaked me out. Like, oh my God, like it could be like something under there. But I hadn't really thought about what's behind me. So now let's talk about the other side of the H. Okay. So, so the other side of the H is directly behind my office. Uh -huh. And at that point I have, um, a custodian friend now and she's really 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 nice and um we'll call her amy mm -hmm. and so amy and i we just bond um she is the sweetest person um and she always comes and says hi to me and she is now my new custodian and you know we've really gotten to know each other in the months that we've worked together and i can tell she's very tiny um, she can, she probably only weighed like a hundred pounds, really small lady. And again, this is one of those winter breaks. There's not a lot of people. The contractors have already packed up because they're done for Christmas. They're not going to come back until January. Um, and they're going to work before the kids come back. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 
So they're gone. And so I'm alone. And I thought she had gone to Louisiana because that's where she's from. And I was like, oh, I'm like, well, I'll see you in the new year. And then I hear footsteps in the hall behind me. Was she while she while she was still with you? I, I thought she had already left. Uh huh. And so I was kind of like, well, maybe she forgot something. But it doesn't sound like a woman's footsteps. It sounds like something heavier, like a man's footsteps. You know what uh, I mean? Or some I, hooves. Sorry. I was like, <laughs> I was like, hello, because I'm one of those like I'll say hi. I'm like, hello, and, like, nobody responded back. And the custodians usually will say, oh, you know, it's me. Like, you know, no worries. Like, I'm just coming to take out the trash or whatever. But that's not what happens. So directly behind me is the working hallway. So the working hallway has two two classrooms that kind of gets used at this point on and off by people, but nothing frequent. It's nothing like, it's kind of like one of those remote classrooms that people use when they need it. Like an, you know, like a, a conference room, if you will. Yeah. Okay. And so then there are the women's restroom, my restroom and the men's restroom. And across the hall is a door leading into the back side of the library. And then there's the custodial closet. And then there's the door leading towards my side of the, the library towards my office. And then there's exit doors, lots of exit doors on this side. So there's one, two, three, there's four exit doors. And so whoever came in, I didn't, I could only tell that they came in from the back side of the library. But I couldn't, so I can't really determine which door, but I'm pretty sure it's that exit door. And so I'm like, hello, and like nothing. Did you hear a door or did it sound like anybody came in? I didn't really hear, that's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't really hear the door, but I hear which room they go in, or I can kind of guess which room they enter the restroom. See, the restrooms are really old. The restrooms have really heavy doors and it doesn't open like the classrooms. So they have tile and they have really, really, really high ceilings. Like compared to the classrooms, these have ceilings that lead into attics. Like in the restroom, if you were to go to the women's restroom, you enter, you can't see directly into the restroom. You have to, it's like a labyrinth style door. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. That's like if the door wasn't there, you still wouldn't really be able to see the stalls kind of thing. Yes. So you walk in, you turn, and then you turn and you turn again to get into the main part of the restroom. And if you look directly up, there's no windows in there, by the way. Um, if you look directly up to the ceiling, there's a, a tiny, creepy attic door. And there is an equivalent attic door in my restroom okay. and in the men's restroom. They all, and they're sealed off, like they sealed off the men's and the women's and they left mine without the seal. They, and I was like, for real, like I even told them if y'all are up there sealing it off, Y'all need to seal mine off. And they said, no, nah, we don't need to do yours. And I'm like, mine is the creepiest one of all. My restroom was so tiny. Like you could literally put both of your hands on each wall and walk. Like I'd be going out and using the other restroom. <laughs> See, but I liked having my own, especially when I was a nursing mom, because I had a sink that was private and I could wash the, um, the flanges from my, you know, my pump. Yeah. My own restroom. Like, <laughs> I didn't think we were going to get into breastfeeding sorry, April. Like, sorry, guys, uh, it's but, all yeah. good. <laughs> so it was kind of optimal to have my own restroom. It was nice to have it, but it was also really creepy and it would get fucking cold in there. Like if it froze, because my room, again, there's no windows, it's all tile and cement and like a big giant pipe in there. Um, and I'm telling you, it's really narrow. And really, 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 really long to get to the restroom stall. Um, it could get easily like below freezing in there. I remember several times that that toilet would freeze, like the ice. It would turn into ice if we went below freezing. <laughs> oh, dude! It's so fucking cold. I didn't want to go to the bathroom at work, but I mean, I had. I could always be like, "Oh, I have my own private restroom." What people didn't know was like a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it's it was it was an old building, right? It's a really old building. Yeah. Okay, so let me. So That's, I hear the footsteps. Uh huh. <laughs> and 
I'm convinced like it's gotta be one of the custodians and I hear them go into one of the restrooms and I don't hear anybody come out. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, hello. Something's like, I, in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, it's getting close to when I need to leave. By the way, when the other thing happened, I fucking left. I was like, I don't give a shit if it ain't five o'clock. I'm out of here. Like I'm gone. Yeah. So I go to the hallway and I start checking the rooms because I know I have to. So, and I should have called security. Of course I don't, but I, I was just like, let me just get this shit over with. So I check the first classroom, the one closest to me, and there's nobody there. And then I check the custodial closet and there's nobody there. But that one, I would know no one's there because like, it's literally like, kind of close to my room. I can hear the door open. And then I go to the back classroom and again, nobody there. The men's restroom actually has a lot of natural light in there. It doesn't. A lot of what? Natural light. Oh, okay. Um, it has kind of boarded up windows, but they produce enough light that I'm not really scared to go in there. Um, so I see the doors locked and the light is off in there, but I knock and I'm like, female on board. Is anybody there? <laughs> and I mean, I open it and there's nobody there. I can, the men's restroom's different because if I open the door, there's another door and that door you can see clear to the end of the room. Does that make sense? Yeah. Dude, yeah. it was Pazuzu, dude. Pazuzu was in there, the fucking demon from The Exorcist that was looking looking at you through the fucking but, vent. So I checked my restroom because, again, it's like the men's. I can see clear to the back without having to go all the way in, right? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, why would a man be in the women's restroom? Because that's the last room. That's the only room left that somebody could possibly be in there. And I haven't heard this person leave. I heard the keys. I heard the giant footsteps, like the heavy footsteps. And I know whatever it is, it's behind the fucking restroom door. And so... You get that feeling. Yeah, I get that feeling. Uh -huh. Like, I know where you are. Like, I know where you are, and you know I know where you are at this point. And, and you know so, I know you know where you are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I know he's there. Like, whatever it is, I know it's there at this point. And I don't see the lights on, like under the door. The lights are off. I can clearly see there's that it's there. The lights aren't on in that room. And I'm just like, I have a decision to make. <laughs> and I go ahead and like a dumbass, I turn the lock. Like I, I unlock the restroom door because the door's locked. And I kind of like. I barely open the door and I change my mind. And I say, fuck this shit. I'm leaving. Good, and dude. I, I was going to say, you're making no, every no, no. fucking mistake from the horror movie. Like, the bad I'm horror movie. Girl, I'm your friend that's going to end up like, nope, I ain't going to survive to the sequel. I went ahead and I just said, fuck this. And I locked the door. I honestly, I, I, I locked it. I know I locked it. And I hightailed it out of there. The next day, I come back, and I go check the hallway. Because remember, when I arrive, I check all the doors. The restroom door to the women's was ajar, but the door was still locked. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was How like, the fuck does that happen? I don't, I don't know, but there was nobody there. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like it, like but what I mean, me what I mean, what I mean by like, how does that happen? It's like, <laughs> like my nerdy fucking brain. I'm thinking about the physics of it. It's like, okay, if I the was a ghost, door doesn't open, Joel, Joel, like it doesn't, Joel, it doesn't open. Like it's locked. <laughs> no, like I know, but locked. but it was it was a jar. It was a jar, but it was still locked. Like the bolt was out. So the door, you could lock it. You could, okay. How should I put it? You could open the door. Yeah, and lock it. Person. But once you push it in, like it might, you might leave the door ajar, like you know, le resting on the the little the little what is it called? The locking the latch. mechanism. Yeah. Yeah. Leave. You could leave it resting on there in the locked position, but the second you push it in, that door is locked. Like you can't open it from the outside anymore. You can only open it from the inside and leave. Oh, okay. All right. These yeah, doors, the, the, the locking mechanisms are weird on this whole building. So 
I know I locked it because I pushed it in. I locked it and I said, fuck this shit. I'm gone. Yeah. And I left. I drove out of there. The next day I come back and it's a jar. So let me take you back when I started. So when I started, they kept me out of the library for about a month. And I was so desperate to just get to work. And I'm just. Why did they keep you out? Was it just like a perfect Um, training? Yeah. Lots of training. Okay. Um, they had me doing other stuff on campus and. Okay, cool. I was just wondering. And yeah, and, yeah, no, no. Yeah. And they finally were like, oh, okay, you know, it's yours now. Here are the keys to the kingdom. We don't have anything to do with what you do. You do your thing. Um, come to our meetings. You know what I mean? Like you're on your own. Yeah. Set it up the way you want. So for a good month, I was allowed to reset up, like to get everything ready or two weeks, maybe two weeks to reset up, get everything the way I wanted. Um, and I mean, again, it's a really old building yeah. and it looked worse. It looked in really bad shape when I arrived. It was in really, really bad shape. Um, I started noticing things right away, like immediately. Um, I brought a radio from home because I love music and I would listen to the radio while I worked and I would leave for lunch. And when I came back, Mind you, I locked my office. No one else was in the building at this point. I'm the only person in that building. Um, I would come back, unlock my door, and I could hear the radio was on again. And it would be like on like the 80s, like channel like 88.7 or something. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, who's punking me? (laughs) And like, it happened over and over again. And so then I would just be like, what the fuck? So I I was like, someone's just pulling a prank on me. It's got to be these kids. They're just playing jokes on me. And so finally, I unplug it. I unplug it from the wall. And I come back from lunch. And the radio's back to like the 80 station, like 88.7 or whatever. And it's plugged in? It's plugged back in. And then I was like, oh, hell no. So I took away the radio. And um, I started listening. So this is like early days of YouTube. So YouTube didn't have very many like... It isn't like now, like a wealth of stuff. Like, right. It was different. So there was only like, I don't know, I would find music videos that people had uploaded. Right. I think it was mainly listen- like music videos at that point. Yeah. And so I would listen to music videos um, while I was working. And sometimes I'd bring CDs because I still had a CD ROM, <laughs> like for my computer. And so I would listen to CDs throughout the day and that seemed that solved the problem like that stuff kind of quit happening after that and I just moved on with my day um but like little things like that would happen in that building quite frequently and I finally got a cool co-worker and she was assigned and mind you most of my career that building it was just me um and I know people are like why would you stay there like it was yeah. these crazy shit would happen Honestly, I think I was more, I had several instances of like, I had some coworkers that were like bullying me. I think I was more focused on like that than like anything supernatural that could possibly be in that. Right. And, and, and when a lot of this stuff happens, it doesn't feel supernatural, right? It's only after we think about it for, you know, a day or a couple of hours that it's like, that was fucking weird. Yeah, and I'm just like, uh uh-uh. uh, like I'm I I know that this doesn't feel right. Whoever you are on the back of that door, I, I'm I'm gone. Like that's it. I'm done. Uh, so so it, and just little things like that. And people would make comments about it. Um, especially if I wasn't there. Um, and they were new to the building or having to come in to do something, people leave and they get the hell out of there as quickly as they can. And I just got used to it. And like, honestly, the instances that it would happen, I'll just be honest with you around the winter time. I never really had situations like this really happen. Um, Now, initially when I started, I started in the, in the winter, like the late winter, um, early spring. And, but I mean, all of it quickly faded once I got rid of the radio that's so um, weird. Do, do you still have the radio? No, I don't. I My mom had given it to me, and I told her, I don't think I need this anymore. And I gave it back. 
And and what does she do with it? Have you ever talked to her about it? Oh, like she was like, it's fine. Like she plugged it back in in her office, and nothing like that ever happened with her. How, how bizarre! I wonder if it was like, I don't know. She never had that. It, it was the building, like, and people would comment. Like I told you, I finally got a cool coworker, and she told me she was like, "What time are you leaving?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm here till eight. Like, she was like, like "Fuck that." She was like, <laughs> "Okay." She was like we'll leave together. And I'm like, yeah, we'll leave together. And I was just like, do you feel something? Is something wrong? And she was just like, she was like, it just gets really cold in certain parts of the hallway. And I had never experienced that, but she did. And she was like, there's just cold spots. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, there's like some places in here that get really, really, really cold. And I was like, oh, was that? Uh, and, I, and I mean, I kind of, she used to be like my high school teacher and it was kind of cool that we got to work together. And I was just like, yeah, there's been a few weird things, but it's not so bad. And I was just like, I, I kind of felt like I was like, whatever you are, I'm not going to let you bully me because I have enough to deal with, with the real people who are living and working with me that are treating me like shit. Well, so, sometimes I sometimes I wonder if like those negative energies that manifest is like the feeling of somebody staring at you and stuff like that. I wonder if that's not um, uh, the same kind of energy that maybe might cause people to act less than pleasant. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like maybe and they were being assholes because that energy affected them in that way. Yeah, I don't know. Like that's a good I hadn't really considered that. But yeah. I mean, I had only really experienced that early when I was in my early 20s, like, you know, when you're still getting finding your way in the workplace. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to be that person that goes to HR and complains. Another like, thing that's associated with this stuff oftentimes is the concept of liminality, where we're at the threshold of something and it can be literally anything. It can be um, a period in your life. You know, the 20s are a liminal period of time because you're transitioning from childhood to adulthood um liminality happens like you often see ghosts on a stairwell because it's the liminal space between the first and second floor um there's uh fucking ghosts often in doorways which you know represent another form of liminality so it could be time it could be location space you know, whatever, anything associated with a threshold of or the movement of one phase to another. And so I, I don't know. I, there's there's a bunch of theories on the Internet about about that. I just want you to know that I was just like, you're not going to fucking bully me because I have enough to deal with here. <laughs> I fucking felt like I was like, whatever you are, whoever you are, you cannot bully me because it cannot be worse than I went through a really bad phase like and like. If you're out, if anyone's like in their early twenties and you're experiencing it, you just go to HR. Like, don't, don't, don't worry. Don't feel like what I felt like that you're like the only one. Cause it wasn't a boss that was bullying me. It was a peer. And like, it was, it got to be really, really bad. And I put up with it for a really long time, considering they didn't even work in my building, but we had to serve on committees together. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. go to and so I think I was just reaching like that bullying point, like, you know, you're not going to fucking bully me. Like I'm getting too much of it from someone else. You're not going to be, you're not going to be next. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. Did you deal with that in school where you bullied like no, early on? Like it was so new to me. Like I, I can't say that. Like I had, Oh, I had witnessed people do that, you know, to others like on the bus, like once, like, I really like this guy, like in probably junior high. And it's so sad. Like, I don't even know, like, I can't, I couldn't even tell you very much about him. He had agreed to go to like the Valentine's day dance with me. Mm -hmm. And like that, I don't know that week before that weekend happened. Um, I saw this guy on the bus. Like, I don't even know. We're just sitting there talking, minding our own business. And this guy comes and he gets his, he takes off his belt and he starts beating my friend what the fuck and i know and like i i was just like i was just like i didn't know what else to do and i was just shocked like i didn't understand why it was happening and i never saw him again 
I think I'm sure his parents took him out of school. I never saw him again, like ever. And I mean, it was just like, man, I finally found someone like I clicked with and, you know, one of those first junior high crushes and like he disappeared. He's not in the yearbook. I couldn't, I don't even remember his name. So sad. And I was just like, I, but I wasn't, I can't say that I was really like bullied. Um, I kind of felt like I was just like a regular person. Um, I was always active in school. I did dance team from like junior high on. Um, I did clubs too. I think I was in Spanish club at one point. Um, Honor society students. I was busy. Always, always, always busy doing something. But no, so like experiencing it as an adult, like from someone I felt like this person felt like I was taking away their star being assigned to a committee and they are not the only person in charge. Like they put me and I was a lot younger than the person and they, they gaslighted the hell out of me and treated me so bad in front of people. And like, I remember the day the, the, the day I realized it wasn't my imagination this guy, and I'm just going to say it, he was like the campus asshole. Yeah. Like, I thought I thought he was a fucking prick. Like, I had heard how he talked to people, and I was just like... I, I guess was, it could just be like, it doesn't have to be anything supernatural. It sounds like just like a toxic environment with a yeah. happenstance so, group of toxic people. So, but you know, I loved a lot of the people that I worked with. Just, I didn't care for a few of them. But this one guy... I I changed my mind about the campus asshole. Like, I'll just tell y'all. I always thought he was an asshole. I was just like, yeah, he ain't my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Um, But he's, we're okay with each other. You know, we're cool. So we're in this meeting and he gets sent to the meeting just to fill in for somebody else. And he witnessed her talk to me the way she normally talked to me. Um, She blamed me for like, overspending on her committee's budget when she has told me to spend that money and like gaslighting the hell out of me in this meeting. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, so what are we going to do? And I was about to say my answer. And I had literally said one syllable and she said, no. (laughs) And I was like, what the fuck? And every I'm in a meeting with like 20 other people and they're all witnessing this. And he stands up and he said, wow he was like this is how you talk to people in his meetings he's like he i want to say he did say some like profanity he was like i can never come to this damn meeting again he was like if that's how you treat people and like he was the only person that ever stood up for me in like the time i had to be on that committee and i was just like i changed my mind about him i was like it wasn't me like it's about first impression, like first impressions, like can some- sometimes be off putting. Like I was telling you the other day, like it always seems like the mean looking teacher is like the one that's like most laid back and doesn't give a shit. And like the really <laughs> nice teacher is always like the one that like really puts you to task. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm the latter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You mentioned that yesterday. <laughs> I uh, am. Yeah. And you do look like that, like on your Facebook images, you look like a very uh, soft spoken (laughs) person. (laughs) (laughs) No, like today, like I told the the bell rang and like, I thought I had told them to get up and go. I was like, okay, y'all can go. And like, cause we're cleaning our, we don't have a lot of computers, but we have some, I'm like cleaning, wiping everything down, like for the next class. Cause you know, we got to go. And like, they're all sitting there and I'm like, did the bell is like was everything okay i'm like what's going on is this our bell because we have multiple bells that for different people i was like i think our bell rang right they're like well we didn't one of the kids is like we didn't want you to get mad at us for <laughs> without your permission <laughs> that's what i tell my little one i'm like you know what don't be intimidated by somebody who's like aggressive like just say what's on your mind you're allowed to you know? I laughed and I was like, because I always tell them the bell doesn't dismiss you, I do. <laughs> and like they sat there waiting for me to dismiss them. I'm like, I'm sorry, you guys. Y'all have a very good week. <laughs> Damn, dude. I think it's time you reassess your approach, dude. <laughs> no, they just giggle. They were laughing. Like, I have I love these kids this year. Like, we're having really good, but I think that like 
yeah, my classroom management's pretty, like, I'm pretty strict with them. I'm like, y'all need to stay seated. The bell doesn't just yeah. you. I do. But that was, like, early in the year when I'm setting our boundaries. And, yeah. like, they're pretty good about it. And it was my bad for not saying, like, okay, you guys, y'all can go. Like, they were waiting for me to dismiss. Yeah, dude, so. You got to you gotta listen for that bell if you're going to fucking enforce that rule, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard it. But we have so many bells. Like, so many yeah. bells. Like at this point, there's multiple bells for different doors and it is, it is kind of hard like to keep up with them. Cause I think there's like three different bells and I'm like, wait, is that like our bell or is that their bell or is that the other bell? Yeah. Why is that? I seem to remember middle school having more bells than high school. Oh my God. There's so many bells and it's not like specific to my campus. My last campus before this. I, I couldn't tell you, like, I tell the kids, y'all, like, y'all need to tell me what period it is, because, like, I can't even keep up with these bells. Like, I don't know, like, what is what? And then we have different bell schedules for different days for different things. It's it's kind of, it's, I think, last year and even the year prior at my other campus, I mean, there's the pep rally schedule, there's regular bell schedule, early release bell schedule, uh, <laughs> Um, I don't know. There was at least four or five different bell schedules and I couldn't tell you. And they would sometimes apply to some days and not others. And I'm like, man, I cannot keep up. Like, <laughs> and yeah. this year is different, especially with COVID. And now we have to have like staggered releases. So, but I was like, oh God, y'all just made my day. Like, <laughs> like it was like, yeah, they should get rid of that. I don't know. Like, I mean, maybe kids should be expected to like, just carry a watch with them at all times and know when nah, to go. No, no, we need to have staggered release. Like I actually do think that is a, it is a good necessity because it does keep social distance in place. And like, it keeps the halls from getting overly congested. I don't know if you ever saw that picture that was circulating on the internet where that was like thousands of kids. And like, you know, at the beginning of right. when school came back and like, they're like, this is what a five, a school looks like during bell change. Cause I've been in a school when it's like that, when the middle of the bell change and there's lots of people and like, you can't even go the opposite direction. Cause you, you won't be able to, like, you have to go in the flow. Um, but yeah, I believe in it. I think it is positive, but man, like you do have to, I have to be on it. And I tell them, I'm like, I'm sorry. I can't remember which bell we are. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember. And I'm like, one of the kids was like, it's our bell because there's people our size in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> and I look in the hallway sometimes. I'm like, wait, are those last year's kids or this year's kids? I'm like, okay, that's this year's kids. Go, go, go. <laughs> can you tell the difference in size between the different grades? Yes. Yeah, you can. I, I guess with practice, right? Because like I see like a, a sixth grader and a seventh grader and I'm like, ah, they look the same to me. <laughs> no. And so for me, like, you know, I teach sixth grade. And so I know which ones are my kids this year. And I know for sure the ones I had last year, I don't, I didn't teach the eighth graders, so I don't know them, but I kind of remember them from last year. So at this point I can kind of look in the hall and I'm like, okay, those are, those aren't mine. So that's eighth grade. And I'm like, okay, no, this is sixth grade. Like I can kind of guess and like based on height, they're still, they're still pretty little in six. So Tell me about real quick, cause we're actually running at like an hour and 40 minutes, but, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, it went by real quick. Uh, what, tell me about this, this picture, um, with, with the greenery where it's looking at something in the middle, right? Oh my God. So that was from like, after I had left my library job. Okay. And so this was nowhere near the library. No, this is across the street from my house. Okay. Um, so I saw that they were going to be, it's like a green, it's a, a small little green space. It's always been there. It's like the last piece of what used to be. Our home used to be technically like country. It had a well, lots of sunflowers. How big is this area that we're looking? So it's like a green belt. So how big a is this area? Green belt. Uh -huh. Um, I don't know. Not that big. Like it's, I bet you could put multiple houses on it probably the size of a small city block okay it's okay super small but it's mine it's not ours but it's like it's what's left of what used to be country mm -hmm. in this area yeah yeah um my home used to be in the country and now it's not yeah. there's houses everywhere all around us and so that's all that's left 
And I saw, I panicked one day because I saw, um, they had the John Deere's out there. And I'm like, oh God, they're going to tear down my little piece of, my little piece of, my little forest. It's going to go. And then this is really going to be like us, you know. Like, right. It's sad. It's, it, yeah, it's sad. Yeah. It's sad. So I took a picture. Like I was a little I was a little disappointed. So you weren't trying to capture this image no, this way. No, no, I was trying to capture. I saw the people and they had left and I'm like, I didn't want to be that creeper taking photos when the, like the contractors are out there. So I snapped a picture and then I came back inside and, um, this was on 35 looking... millimeter film. No, this is on my iPhone on your iPhone. Okay. Yeah. I just snapped a photo and I, come back inside and I'm just kind of flipping through my pictures and then I see it I'm like what the hell is that like what is that and I start to zoom in and then I'm like oh my god what the hell is that yeah it, well let me bring up this because you you gave me a zoomed in image and what like at first I was like oh it's like a guy wearing a shirt with a cap on right but when you look at the zoomed in version it's like what the fuck I shared it on Facebook and I think you and one of your friends was like, yeah, that's because I like tried to write it off. I'm like, it's someone with a bee, ma a beekeeper mask on. <laughs> you, you know what I saw when I looked at this fucking thing? So like I saw like a woman in a shirt. I'm like zooming in right now. Yeah, it uh, looks like a woman's shoulders. You can tell like Right, like she's got like a like a like boobs. Like it's a female and she's got arms, but then it's like a like a guy's face, like a black bald guy's face, but instead of like having eyes and a nose and a mouth, it's like this this platyp giant platypus looking <laughs> thing with like cartoon teeth giant cartoon teeth like, i gotta know like that's what i see when i look at it i like it's a beekeeper's mask joelle like it's a beekeeper's mask. nah dude if that's a beekeeper's mask it's like i don't know from the year 3045 <laughs> i'm I, like I, I, there was nobody there joelle like there was nobody there like i don't understand like what we're looking at like i can't tell you i've never seen it since but what, what did you first think? Because I just gave you well, my I weird started, ass interpretation. I, I but like, I kind of like froze because I'm looking through and I'm like, what the hell is that? And I zoom in and I see what you see. And I'm like, ah! and like, I, I was like, oh, my God. So then I like posted it on Facebook and like people start commenting on it. And I'm like, what is this? What like, I'm mother? hoping I'm secretly hoping someone can just dispel that it's just a beekeeper's mask. And I can move on with my day. Like you like, get like a link from a, like a friend at a, like, and it's a beekeeper's mask on Amazon and it looks exactly like this. Yeah. See, that's what I'm hoping for. Like someone's out there like a sleuth and they can be like, name <laughs> it. Like, I know what that is. Fuck like, that. This is a goddamn alien with like some kind of breathing apparatus on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to know. I've never seen anything in that woods since then. Um, you know I what's weird? It looks a little reptilian. Like some, like. I don't know. I dude, will what say if, that. What if you I caught at like an actual like picture of a reptilian? Or maybe it was like some kind of like <laughs> interdimensional creature. And when you take a picture of it, like the technology they have like automatically distorted it. Holy fuck. Holy <laughs> fuck. Holy fuck, Crystal. Know, let me, I'm, April, let me tell you what I just saw. Okay. I'm so, never going to want to see this photo again now. Like, <laughs> we're like really dissecting it. So, so let me tell you what I, right? This creature, whatever it is, has a ball of light on the back of it coming you're out fucking, of its skin. You're kidding me. I don't want to look. Like, oh my God, I've never zoomed in that close. I don't want to. Or, look that well, you're going to see it. Or, Beyond the, cause, cause right, 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 it's in between two branches that are going up like a V. This is in broad daylight, by the way. Like this is like three o'clock in the afternoon on a like, summer day. I know what I'm looking at and it's not that it's holes in the, in the, in the greenery and the trees in the background, but to the left of the, of the, of the left trunk and to the right of the right trunk, I see two Asian women with masks on facing the thing in the middle. 
What? No way. Like it like it's that's not what it is. Like I'm I'm not saying that oh, yeah, yeah. That, that that's what it is. It I, I don't know. I'm just like seeing faces all over this thing. I'm probably if missing something. Just like solve this mystery, like the Scooby Doo mystery, and just pull the mask off. I would greatly appreciate it, so I can be like, oh yeah, that's just like the beekeeper mask, or oh, it's just some mask, some welder's mask. I don't know. Ha, who? What? What? Uh, what else did the the comments say about like the leading theories? Do you remember? Nobody really knew. Like nobody knew. I straight up was like, it's a beekeeper mask. And like you and one of your friends was like, yeah, that ain't no beekeeper mask. And I'm yeah. like, I'm gonna keep telling myself it's the beekeeper mask. Well, I if it helps you this. sleep at night, okay, you will say what? I will say this. When I was growing up here, I re- with my grandmother, we had a barbecue, and in the backyard, there's like lots of woods which no longer exist. And I remember, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you this. I remember my grandmother and my aunts because we had already left, and my grandma. They said that they were in the backyard just chilling, you know, drinking and talking and well, not drinking alcohol, but like just, you know, having soda and water like my grandma didn't drink. So they're just, you know, just shooting the breeze in the backyard. And from out of the woods, a black helicopter came out of the backyard. They were like, what the hell? And like they called my dad to tell him this is like in the early 90s. And like he was like, no way. And he was like, from where? And they they don't know like it just showed up, dude. It, it was it was special forces going after this fucking reptilian that you caught on film. <laughs> but yeah, but this is like tw- that had to be twenty eighteen, I think twenty eighteen when that photo was taken. Yeah, and like that incident happened like with the helicopter like in the nineties, early nineties, like ninety two, ninety no, ninety three, ninety four. Well, that like that was like a big like. Uh... A popular conspiracy, I think, in the '90s was the 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 fucking black helicopter thing. Well, it they my grandma saw it, and like my aunts, and like there's nothing. We are nowhere near a, an air force anything or airport in where my home is. So, April. Yes. This was fun. I'm glad we did it this. It was fun. We need to do this again. Um, uh, I'm gonna go out with our outro music and and your little fucking reptilian big and bright on the screen. Um, before we go, you said, or I I don't know, is there anything else that you wanted to discuss that we that I hadn't brought up? Um, no, I think I'm good. I mean, I guess your name, the story about your name, that was it. We can talk about that another day if you want. Well, I mean, it's a it's a nickname that I guess you got. That okay. I had back in the day or something, right? I, I'll say it. So for the longest time, I didn't know how to say your name. <laughs> I was like, is it Joelle or Joel? And like before, like I met my Our husband, common friend. Uh-huh. Yeah. I met my, before I met my husband, I dated someone named Joel. Spelled your his name exactly. Oh, like I that. remember this story, I think. Yeah. Oh my God. And I was like, Okay. So for years, you know, my husband was like, you know, like after a while, I kept calling you Joel and like, he just got used to it. And he, I was like, wait a second, like, wait, 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 wait a second. Is it Joel or Joel? He was like, shit, I don't know. Like I always called him Benavides or Ben <laughs> <laughs> He was like, you've been calling him Joel for so long when you reference him, like, I just, he was just like, he just got used to saying Joel. And so then I was like, wait, like, it was like a a running joke. I was always waiting for one of these days that you were going to post or say how to say your name so I could have it to know how to say it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, well, I I always tell people it depends on whatever side of town you're on. Right. Cause like, uh, on the West side and the South side, it's Joel or Joel. But you know, if you're on the North side, it's Joel because more. It's more, it's a more anglicized uh pronunciation. Hmm. So then I guess I was still right either way. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. And then the bend a penis part. Sorry. All right. Well, um now that we've humiliated me at the end of my own damn podcast, we're going to go out. Um Thanks for listening. Uh, I don't think we referenced anything financial, so no need to disclaim here. But um, 
uh, you guys make sure and smash all the appropriate buttons and uh, I will see you guys later. Thanks, April. Bye. Sometimes when you're here, I can feel no doubt. Cause you keep me where the stars are found. It doesn't really matter. Cause you're here.